And welcome to the uh, Monday, November 26th Select Board Meeting. We are still at the middle school in our pre-town meeting, Select Board Meeting mode. Um, we have a uh, number of things to deal with on our agenda tonight. I do want to mention that our final item, which was an executive session to consider strategy for collective bargaining, has been postponed. We'll probably deal with that next Monday, um, but we won't be dealing with that tonight. So everything else... Um, yeah, we will be dealing with. Um, and make sure that we actually talk about next Monday's meeting before we leave here, as well as the potential for Wednesday's meeting. So just make a little note to yourself to remind me of that. Okay, so without further ado, uh, we are doing uh, positions on the remaining um, town meeting warrant articles that we hadn't considered yet. You don't actually need to be that close. You can be a little bit further back, because if you speak yet, yeah, that's perfect. Um, if you speak directly into those mics, then you'll overwhelm them. Um, so we have uh, four petition articles that we have had initial presentations on several weeks ago, and um, we deferred taking positions on them at that time because they were still undergoing uh, some review and negotiation with the planning board. The petitioners were making some revisions, et cetera. So, uh, we are now ready to do so. So uh, we will have brief presentations on these, primarily on the things that have changed since we had the full presentations a couple weeks ago. So we'll start with Article 16, and uh, who would like to speak to that? Is that it? Um, sure. Um, Maria Adams, Precinct 10. Uh, I wasn't here at the earlier presentation, so I don't know how fully you've been briefed on the background of these articles. I don't know if you want me to say something about that or whether you really want me to just cut right to the chase and to keep the new language. Um, so overall, we have the general sense of the articles, and we did get the presentation from, I believe it was Miss Barbarette, the first time on Article 16. Okay. So, so you can just speak, um, I mean, so, just sort so of generally to the intent and what the, what the revisions have been. Uh, so you know that we've been working with the building subcommittee and the planning board and that our intention is that our articles both uh, are congruent with the planning board articles and also in some cases strengthen them. So that our, uh, our changes to Article 16 are primarily to include, to change the last sentence of the earlier article to read any renovation or expansion of or addition to an existing dwelling that results in the creation of a two-family dwelling shall be considered a converted dwelling and permitted under section 3.3201. This is a more stringent approach to the duplex, to the two uh, family dwellings. Whereas our understanding of the planning board article is that the planning board article considers a duplex, a building that has that is built anew or that has had substantial uh, additions added to it and therefore those would go under site plan review, we are arguing that, that anything other than a new dwelling built as a duplex should be considered a conversion and go under special permit. Uh, we prefer the more stringent regulations that attach to the special permit because we believe that particularly what we've been seeing in our neighborhoods, which is uh, in some cases additions to uh, single family houses that become duplexes and are turned into rentals, that uh, those really need to be examined in relationship to use of the neighborhood and appropriateness to the neighborhood and the various uh, uh, considerations that go with special permits. So that's really the basic thrust of 16. Okay, and uh, where is the planning board on this article now? I think that uh, they, as soon as they come out of executive session, they will be hearing from uh, two of our members about this. So uh, we're having simultaneous play here. Okay. May I add, I'm John Sorry. Bach, I'm a precinct 10. <clears throat> Just to emphasize that the concept here is that once you have created a commercial use, a rental in this area, that you're no longer just an owner occupant, you have a a profit-making uh, opportunity, and we're saying that it's appropriate for the zoning board to take into account not only your interest <coughs> as a property owner, but the interest of the neighbors. And that's what the special permit gives you, where site plan review, as you know, is much more just looking at the exterior of the property. So, question? Yeah. Um, 
questions or comments on Article 16? <clears throat> Ms. Brewer. I was just going to say, it's a little bit harder um, to do our work in terms of our position when we don't know what the planning board position is because we depend on the ins and outs of their discussion to a great deal. So it's going to be difficult for us. Other questions or comments? So I attended the planning board meeting when they originally considered this, not in its revised form. But um, my understanding at that time was that um, there, that an unintended consequence of this is that it might, by creating very, um, very strict requirements on converted dwellings, and, and this is, if I understand this correctly, this is. Um, putting serious constrictions on what would otherwise be, uh, it's making everything that would have been a duplex go through the converted dwelling process, um, and which limits the amount of space and all kinds of things that you could add to the, uh, add to the building. Um, the, the concern, as I understood it, is that this might inadvertently encourage a property owner to demolish the building and start over because then they wouldn't have the same renovation constrictions. And so I wonder if you've dealt with that. Yeah, and I think it's, it's pretty clear. <clears throat> the cost of destroying a, a whole building is, is, is considerable. So although you could, I think for any bylaw you can have unexpected developments that we think it's not going to be very common that a, somebody in order would come in and destroy the entire building and reconstruct from ground up this new building, this new duplex, uh, as a profit-making uh, enterprise. So we're not, we don't think that should drive what is the most common uh, ex expectation here, that simply the site plan review is inadequate to what is generally going on, and 95% 90, of the cases will be something other than somebody coming in and destroying the property and building it up. If I could add two points to that. Uh, one is, although we clearly prefer the special permit as a process to protect the interests of the neighborhood, I don't think we consider it as onerous as you were suggesting in your description. Uh, I, I think that it should be perfectly plausible for an owner to have a, a good plan, easily develop a good plan, that the, that, uh, the Zoning uh, Board of Appeals would be glad to approve and would do so quickly. Uh, I think that the major difference between the two, as we suggested earlier, is that the Zoning Board of Appeals with a special permit looks at use <coughs> and neighborhood appropriateness. And I think that that is an important distinction for us as the neighbors who otherwise bear the abuse and the destruction of the fabric of the neighborhood that occurs otherwise. So I don't think, uh, although I'm arguing on behalf of the special permit instead of the site plan review. I don't think it's as onerous and difficult as, as possibly one might suggest. And in fact, I would be very concerned about someone who would want to avoid that kind of inquiry in building a duplex for commercial rental in a residential neighborhood. I think that they should be able to go through that kind of review. And finally, uh, we do have a demolition uh, article uh, I'm, I'm not certain about its status, but uh, if that doesn't uh, come before you tonight, we'll be asking the planning board to please take that up in time for spring. And uh, if there are unintended consequences, those could be remedied as of spring time. Okay. Other questions or comments on 16? Mr. Hayden. Yeah, I'm just, just curious about, uh, I'm sure you've read the uh, planning board's um, discussion on the old Article 16. It's not the current, not Correct. the way it's been currently amended. Correct. I'm wondering how much, uh, I'm wondering what you think about that if it were applied to the currently amended language. Uh, could you remind me of the key points because I've gone through so many for yeah. <laughs> and my right. head spins. Basically the Article 13 and 14 which we're going to see Correct. beforehand, uh, should they pass, um, make this moot? Except for the difference with the that's why we honed in on that point okay. in what remains of the article, because that's the only remaining piece that we would like to strengthen. Okay. Mr. Walsh. Could you, I'm sorry. Could you explain a little bit why you want to apply the design review principles here? Why I want to? Apply the design review principles to these other categories. Uh, the, the, um, 
I simply put in the uh, terms for for what the numbers represented, and I thought that these were correct. Would there be a reason not to do that? That uh, I mean, we as you know that uh, kind of in our neighborhood, we're beginning to think about local historic district. We're trying to think about the homage the both the diversity and the homogeneity of of uh, historic districts that have different historic traditions. And I think it would be quite appropriate to consider those when one is looking at a conversion. Particularly, we're thinking about some of the conversions in which the add-on <coughs> building enormously dwarfs the ini initial uh, building and mm -hmm. is really uh, quite ugly in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But you originally wanted to apply it to renovations and change as well? Or did I get that right? Um, <coughs> we do want to apply yes. to renovations. Yes. Yeah. But we're asking uh, that this uh, we're asking that this come in as part of the zoning board of appeal process. Mm -hmm. Is it your thought that that's unduly onerous? I'm you know, just wondering about it. I wasn't sure because of the changes in the language. Again, as you said, so many back and forth revisions. Because the original language applied to any construction, renovation, or expansion, and here it's any construction of two families or cash flowing. So. Like the creation versus foundation question. Yes. And, and there the intention was we were honing in on mm -hmm. the, um, the limitation mm -hmm. of, of what a duplex in our view mm -hmm. should, should be considered for the uh, site plan review. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, did you consider, rather than having a special <coughs> permit by the ZBA process, have it through the planning board process? Uh, which would have sort of the double benefit of keeping all of the discussions within the same board that might come up about it if it's going to be conversion or you know, it's not or whatever like that. But it, it did come up and it was discussed by the yes. planning board and the, the, and the and pros us. and by yes. us. Um, there's an advantage to having the zoning board of appeals which hears all of these cases. You can think about them uh, in this much larger context. So the planning board might do a very fine job, but we thought it was preferable that the zoning board of appeals keep the responsibility since it sees a ton of cases. The planning board would only see a few cases here, and so wouldn't have the same perspective. I think they might do a fine job, but I think the CBA we feel could do uh, is, is the more appropriate agency for reviewing this. We also had a question about whether those the design or you know, you know plan the legislation should be the ones who implement it. So it was a, a jurisdictional issue. Okay. Um, so I don't know where folks are on this. I find this one complicated, uh, discussing it within my household, because we just need really a new hobby going on in my house. Uh, I, I couldn't even get a life. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. Um, I, I couldn't even understand the implications of it enough to be able to explain it well. So I think that the um, not having the planning board's interpretation of this, um, and, and I appreciate the intent behind it very much, and I appreciate the re revisions you've been trying to go through to get it to a point that's kind of mutually acceptable to folks, but, um, but I just don't understand it well enough without their, um, their position and recommendation to take a position myself. Um, is the, do other members of the select board feel differently. I think that the consequences issue and the consequences for what this does to potential um, changes of construction for duplexes, it's just, it's more complicated than, um, unless I'm just too simple and not understanding this well enough, I think it's more complicated than we might be grasping here for how it interacts with the rest of the zoning bylaw. So I just don't want to take uh, personally a strong position on something that, that I don't understand um, when the indication to me is that there are potential negative consequences that aren't well thought out. Ms. Stein. I, I think for me, the major thing is moving from um, SPR to SP um, and I think that's appropriate. I think the planning board is not so much against it as for it because they're saying that if 13 and 14 get voted down, they would support this. So I'm, I'm okay with it. So that was in a previous version. I'm not sure where they are on the current version of it. So I think you have to be careful of that recommendation mm -hmm. also because it, it's sort of a moving target. 
Ms. Hayden. Yeah, I, I'm feeling at a little bit of a disadvantage as I think about this because we haven't um, the benefit of a public hearing on the new version as we did with the old version. Um, and uh, sort of, I mean, that's helpful um, because there are more smart people there who are teasing this, this stuff out than, than I am on it. So I'm kind of, as I think about this, I really would rather have been able to see that or at least get the results from it. And you've already described how this is different. I mean, we do have the results of a public hearing here, mm -hmm. but that was for something else, which you know, you've already pointed out. So, um, I, I wonder if I may, excuse me, make one other point that I neglected to make that I think might inform you in some way. <clears throat> what we're asking for is a, is a return to the situation prior to 2008. That in 2008, uh, the special permit was required for two families in detached dwellings, and that the change to zoning bylaw occurred in 2008. So I think that that would mean that this is not as speculative a situation as as we've been considering. I had neglected to mention that to you. Um, so uh, I appreciate that point. I, I would rather, I, kind of as we did with um, with the article, was it 12 that? Uh, we decided not to take a position on it and hear kind of the full deliberation by the body and get the full benefit of the uh, planning board's uh, thoughts on it. Uh, we opted not to take a position. Does anybody want to do something other than that on this article? Mr. Eaton. I would like to consider referring it, or re recommending referring it um, for a couple of reasons. One, two of which are that um, this seems to me an incredibly important thing that, that we're trying to get done here. Um, and second, um, so it needs to be done. I mean, it's something that, that it's, something has to be done about the circumstance, and this is a thing. But second, and you know, we knew about the 2008 because most of us were there at the time, and recall a great deal of the conversation, which is trying to undo, and that's, appreciate that as well. But the, the what I would like to see done is sort of that discussion brought forward to add it to this discussion, sort of now that we do have an understanding about, you know, the intended as well as the unintended consequences and fix it. Um, so it works. Okay, Mr. Hayden's interest in referral, Mr. Wall. Yeah, just to refer back to the old discussion, part of the, the rationale, as I recall, from the Master Planning Committee plus that was to precisely to address the larger crisis of affordable in the non-technical attempts housing yeah. and class discrimination Absolutely. because there's an attempt to keep duplexes and rentals out of uh, neighborhoods. So yeah. the, the intention was honorable at least. Yeah. <coughs> okay, take no position or referral. Anyone? Ms. Stein? And well, I, I was just going to speak against referring back because I think this is a matter of some urgency. The fact is that the number of properties that have um, changed to being LLCs and such has almost doubled just this year. And I think that we need to sort of slow things down. So I think referring back is going to put an additional delay of, of several months. And for that reason, I wouldn't vote to support referral. Okay. Ms. Brewer? So, it, I'm not sure I'm adding anything to this confusion, but um, the original planning board report talked about how if 13 and 14 had both failed, often when we get to town meeting, we have, you know, like a couple of fairly clear decision trees. This one's way muddier than this because we have no idea what they're even deciding right now while they're off in another room, and if that's still true, or if there's yet another alternative here. So, I'm not sure. That I, I don't see how we could conceivably take a position because if, for example, 13 and 14 pass, then it sounds as though the petitioners are still going to go ahead and move 16, in which case there's just, there's just too many different ways that this could go. And so I feel comfortable saying no position. Okay, we're getting out of no position, Mr. Hayden. I'm going to argue for the referral again um, um, as, as a way to honor um, town meetings request from last time that this kind of thing get the time spent on it to make it correct and in order to get it behind the housing development study which is still not published 
I think it's due any second now because there was a ton it of is. input that went into it. Yep. Um, so a referral would allow us to honor that request. Okay. Would you like to make a motion, Mr. Wall? I'm <clears throat> just going to sympathize with Mr. Hayden in general. I guess what, I, what makes me nervous is such a truncated process for such an important step. Uh, you know, I, I, if it were so urgent and so important, I really wish it, it had come forward sooner and the planning board had commented sooner on a final edition. Uh, I hate to feel pressured to act because other things aren't in place. Normally, that'd be a reason not to act. Okay. So, to be clear, we're not deciding a bylaw change here. We're only deciding a position. So, right. <laughs> uh, we need a motion either to uh, take no position or to refer. Mr. Hayden. I would like to make a motion, and I'm not going to surprise you this evening, and move that we recommend a town meeting mm -hmm. to refer. Your motion is to refer. To back to the planning board, yes. Is there a second? Second. Been moving second for further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. 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 And abstaining, none. So two in favor, three opposed. <coughs> Not taking position to refer. Okay. Mr. Hayden would like to make another motion. <laughs> I would move that we take no position on this uh, article for town meeting. Second. Further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 That was unanimous. Okay. No position on 16. Uh, who would like to speak to no position? It's easy news to say. We take no <laughs> position. <laughs> I can say that. Ms. Burr. Okay. <laughs> Good. All right. 17. Um, the only, the, uh, 17 started as a very long article. I, I do want to say, what some of you already know, uh, that as a citizen petition article, we need to have these in by the due date of September 19th while the planning board and building committee were still doing their work. So that while we were trying to work with them and coordinate uh, our petitions with theirs, theirs were changing and we were in discussion with them. And so uh, that is, I think, the basic reason is that kind of the, the, the differential due dates for the two deliberative processes. Uh, I don't want us to seem lazy or uh, sloppy. I mean, it's, uh, we were working with the system that we were given. Uh, the change in 17 is that 17 has been reduced to the, uh, the first two sentences of Article 17, Paragraph 5. So it's a short uh, proposal now with one addition. And the additional language becomes a modifying clause to A in Paragraph 5. So that A reads, let me read that second sentence, the conversion if in a residential district shall either A, be located in an area that is close to heavily traveled streets, close to business, commercial, and educational districts, or already developed for multi-family use, and the new language, and shall require owner occupancy or a resident manager in one of the units or B, which remains as it is in the current zone bylaw, B from one to two units, et cetera, et cetera, that already has the owner occupancy requirement. The reason for this is uh, we were uh, very moved by uh, Professor Carlstrom's data, which I think many of you have seen, which note that the nuisance houses are non-owner occupied and that none of the owner occupied houses in our residential areas are nuisance houses. Uh, our own experience, some of us who work at the university and have taught there about the fact that the residents will all have adult supervision as well as peer supervision. Uh, and uh, that it was clear that having an owner occupant or we uh, in fact relaxed that a bit by resident manager of one of the units means that there is the kind of adult supervision there to prevent some of the problems that we have found that students are you know, at their wits ends to control themselves or I'm willing to do so, and also somebody whom the neighbors can contact. Um, so I, that's really the basic point there. You know, want to add to that. Well, I think initially we said that there must be owner occupied, one unit must be. Then we had a meeting with two of the major landlords in town, uh, owners of property, and they said that they would accept this if we included as an alternative a resident manager. They felt it was reasonable to require some uh, supervision on site. The problems that occur are between 10 and 3 in the morning. If you have off-site residential managers, you know they're not going to be there at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. 
so these uh, two major owners said, but a resident manager as the alternative would be an acceptable one. So that's why we modified it. And let me just also then add one other point, which is A describes pretty clearly the residential general area, which we noted that the original bylaw didn't uh, control for resident, for owner occupancy. And so we were trying to bring the, re the general residence area at least close to the protection of other residential areas. Thank you. And the planning board has voted to support this yeah. one, is that right? Okay. Um, so questions or comments about 17? Mr. Hayden. Yeah, I just, I just want to be clear. The original article that we signed um, had one, two, three... It had an additional sentence. Four, five other um, additions um, to, to uh, Section 3.3241. Are they all gone? They're all gone. Okay. And, and they're gone again, just to emphasize that we had to submit this on September one. 19th. We had no idea what the planning board was going to do. Right. They were still in, in process. So once we liked what they were going to do, but felt just this needed to be strengthened, we just had left you with this very, very limited revision. So this is um, this was uh, responsive to the same issues that planning board was dealing with. Planning board has considered this themselves with these various revisions that they are also uh, supporting this article. Yeah. Ms. Brewer. I, I just want to make, uh, I want to back up just for a moment talking about the differenti differentiated deadlines. If anything, I, one of the things we'll do after town meeting is we always have a debriefing on how things might work better. And if anything, one of the things we're going to, I'm going to ask that we discuss is that citizen zoning petitions have an even earlier deadline, not change the planning board deadline, but the citizen zoning petitions, because in fact, the only way to get something looked at by the planning board is not to form a citizen petition. You can work with the planning board without getting a citizen petition. So I don't want to imply that, you know, we never said you were lazy or didn't get it done in time, but you also weren't required to go about doing it this way. So, you know, it's a method, it's a perfectly wonderful form of democracy, but it's also an awkward method for all the reasons that it exists. Once you have something submitted, then it's difficult to let it go until you can get all, everything scheduled in terms of the planning board's hearings. So it's not just that you have an earlier deadline. There's a very good reason for that. It's because it's the planning board's expertise area. So I don't want to <coughs> argue, but no, I just I, don't I, want to make it seem like <coughs> it's not an issue, because it is an issue. And, and, and I don't want us to be uh, suggesting in any way that it's unfair that we had to submit it earlier. Uh, we accept that. The whole idea is the planning board should be informed about what we're thinking about. So we were, we were giving this as an explanation, not a protest. <clears throat> okay, so we've all acknowledged it's, it's a complicated process for sure. Yeah. It is what it is and here we are now. So, uh, but the process is working, you know, I mean, it's, it's feeding its right. way through to get to town meeting. <laughs> Mr. Heaton. Um, actually, I, I realize this may not be quite the right time. I'll ask it as a question. Um, the, um, the definition of residential manager requires that Article 15 pass where it's defined. Uh, I want to ask somebody, I'll just make a statement. That's, that's yes. a statement. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Other questions or comments on 17? I, I suppose my statement of response is that if 15 doesn't pass, we need to amend this to have a definition of a residential manager. I'm, I'm, I'm actually reminding my colleagues of that, that okay. interconnection as we make our decision about how we're going to recommend to yes. our recommendation to town meeting. So. You're right. You reminded us as well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, other questions or comments on Article 17? Would someone like to make a motion? Okay. Um, sorry about that. I guess, is, is that my role now, uh, to make these <laughs> yes, motions? Yes, I would like the other motion. You can do this <laughs> that, only that, once. Uh, we recommend Article 17 to um, <clears throat> town meeting um, if Article 15 has passed. Do we, do we want an otherwise? Um, no. I'll just let that go and we'll, we'll decide if there's an otherwise. All right. So maybe we just leave that to planning board how they, how they, I mean, they support this. They want it to pass. Right. They obviously want Article 15 to pass. They depend on each other. Right. So I'll leave that as my recommendation, as my motion, as how we recommend 
this to town meeting. Okay, so I'm sorry, please restate your motion. That, that we, uh, we uh, recommend to town meeting to support um, Article 17 if Article 15 has passed. Second. Further discussion. I guess I'm fine with that. Um, so if it doesn't pass, then we're then, then there's, no recommend, there's no recommendation. There's no. Right. You want me to add that? I can He's say right. if it doesn't pass, then we we're you not. Can't recommend we can't recommend any definition of this. I mean, we could certainly. Uh, yeah, but an amendment is not likely to be approved by Harrison because it's an expansion of the article. It's hard you know, to know how that will go. <clears throat> okay. All right. So fine. So Article 17, if 15 is passed. For the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That was unanimous. Okay. 18. Can we folks speak at 18 or no? Okay. 19. So no one's here for 18. Is that correct? Okay. So we don't know what the status is of 18. Last we heard it would, uh, it was going to be amended or it might be um, dismissed or referred. Yeah, I would just to add for the record, um, we received nothing from any of the petitioners, um, including Mr. O'Connor, who was involved in the discussion of Article 18. Since I believe the 19th, there was some discussion about potential motions, but we have not received any updates in the last week. Okay, so 18 we have no position on because it hasn't been presented to us. So we don't even need to vote no position since we don't have a position because as opposed to not taking a position on the article, we're just, we have nothing to take a position on. I, I guess I'd rather we went ahead and said we have no position because we did hear a brief sort of explanation of it at the November 5th meeting. Okay. So, it, but as far as we know, I mean, it may well be recommended for dismissal. So <coughs> we just have no position at all. I just hate to just leave pain. Right. Well, the other thing we could do is, as was presented, um, we could support or not support it as it was presented. As it ends up getting presented on yeah, the board. Yeah, I, I don't know. This, this is a mess. Why don't we just leave it as no position? OK, would you, Ms. Brewer, you want to make a formal vote? Yeah, I, OK, I, I go ahead. That we, I that we take no position second. on Article 18. All right, so moving to second and further uh, discussion. I, I would yeah. second it, but I have something to say. Go ahead. Which is that um, I, I think that uh, I would want us to be clear that our lack of position um, is because there's not an article there. Right. Not <laughs> what we saw on November 5th, 5th was not going to work, and that would have developed a very strong recommendation not to accept. But the reason that we're taking no position is that we're expecting that there will be appropriate and acceptable modifications to it. I mean, that, that, was, that was sort of how we left it. I'm in agreement with that. Does anybody? So if Mr. We Higgins said spoke, no. we would have said no the, the way it right. was before, or some of us would have. Um, are, are we satisfied with Mr. Heaton's mm -hmm. explanation there? And hence, he'll probably want to speak to that. Okay, further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. No position on 18 and Mr. Heaton. Um, so, Mr. Heaton, will you I, I reference would. that in your remarks? Okay. And did we assign 17? No, we didn't. Who would like to speak to 17? All you have sure to say Mr. is Hayden we support it. <laughs> Mr. Hayden, you're going to just keep getting all the zoning articles. We've okay. assigned you 17. Fine. Okay. Appreciate Good. It. Moving right along. 19. Yes, I'm ready to do that. we got a couple other things we have to do before we leave here, so we've got to go. Yeah. Okay. 19. <coughs> um, 19, uh, is what you saw earlier. We've, um, we've made only <coughs> one minor change in the 19 that you've seen before. And that minor change uh, was to change the uh, responsibility for notifying owners or managers with the police department rather than with the town manager's office. This was after discussion with the town manager and with the chief of police. Uh, otherwise, uh, the, uh, the warrant itself, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the uh, article itself, uh, has several component parts, as you saw in the original. It identifies the Amherst Police Department as the department responsible for notifying owners and management companies. Uh, it names managers and management companies as responsible agents, together with owners of rental properties uh, for the purposes of both of, of general responsibility as well as uh, fines and response costs. Uh, I should note, by the way, that we have a definition of rental property manager or management yeah. organization in yeah. Yeah. 19. Yeah. So uh, there we go. We, we thought of everything somewhere. Uh, and that we uh, ask 
that on, upon the third violation, uh, the owners, managers, and or management companies cover the response costs that otherwise accrue to the town uh, via the taxpayers. And uh, I don't know if you want to speak to that point. Um, uh, yes, I think the, the, we have ch we've stayed with Shell um, in all instances because um, uh, the alternative language was leaving responsibility with the police department to determine reasonable effort on the part of a uh, property owner or management company in managing their property. And we felt that two warnings was sufficient notice to the uh, people involved that um, this responsibility was going to be coming up and that it wasn't necessary to provide yet another um, option for them at the last minute. Uh, two warnings. It's more than I get for a speeding ticket. <laughs> I get the right way. Um, so I think there's plenty of time for them to. Um, to really um, make adjustments to their property, to get security guards if that's necessary, to um, get some mediation, which both of which have been tried and worked in some instances, and um, or to find some other means of enforcing their leases so that the uh, neighborhood is, uh, is controlled. And um, Mr. Misniti, I know that you've been in discussion with these folks uh, along with the Chief of Police on this article. Uh, sure, and I, uh, I want to say publicly uh, how much uh, I and the staff appreciate what really has been and is an ongoing good faith effort to move this process forward. Um, and it really is a, an attempt at a, at a stronger partnership between the town and agencies within the town government and with neighborhoods uh, and other institutions in town to make progress. So there's a lot to like, quite frankly, in this article, and I said, said as much in our meetings. Um, I really believe that the principle of having the police department, as they do in many day-to-day -day situations in the nature of their work, retain some discretion uh, when, uh, so that it's not a one-size-fits-all. Uh, um, in position of a, of a fine in every every single uh, instance, which is the implication of the wording, uh, particularly on the so-called third strike, you know, the third violation. Um, so, um, well, I think there's a lot to like. I want to suggest for consideration one potential amendment. Now, this is a petition article, so I'm not prepared to offer an amendment, but I wanted to throw out some language uh, for consideration. Uh, on paragraph seven, um, which is um, some language that we we discussed uh, in our meeting with the chief and I uh, mm -hmm. last week, um, that talks about on that third case that response costs shall be assessed except when the party to be assessed establishes to the satisfaction of the police department that it exercised reasonable efforts to prevent the most recent public nuisance from occurring. Um, that makes explicit in the language uh, this um, discretionary uh, ability on the part of the enforcement agency uh, when there is, in, in its judgment, a really good faith effort going on. And I know we've talked about that there's been some progress in that area on a case-by-case -case basis, whether it's the code enforcement officer, police, or health, or uh, the the uh, building department, uh, et cetera. Um, this is an extension of that principle um, while still strengthening the existing nuisance house bylaw. The other thing that I might suggest and we get into at this town meeting that we also talked about at this meeting was uh, uh, working together uh, in the months ahead to further strengthen the nuisance house bylaw so that it talks about multiple violations at the same property even if there's some turnover in the tenants in a calendar year period, which in the nature of our rental market, that, that, uh, that occurs. And so that it's not, so that if the problem really is, there's some sympathy, if the problem really is a particular uh, property, uh, that there's a 
consequence related to the property and, and the property owner. Um, so that's not within the scope of this article, the petition article is drafted, but I think it's something we, we've expressed work, wanting to work together on. And I believe you and the, the chief have also agreed that you would be coming up with a schedule of response costs, which I think is something that we don't have as yet, even though it was asked for in the 2008 Yeah, we've agreed, we've agreed we'd come up with so some that, sort that of reasonable be, uh, formulaic for. calculation of that. Yes. <clears throat> Can I just add one brief comment? Sure. Um, I think of this as a sort of the same sort of thing as the argument over it taxes in the top 2%. Who carries the burden? In this case, the town has always carried the burden. One, one <coughs> public nuisance, two public nuisance, three, four. We never assessed the owners with the response cost. So as I think of it, uh, while I understand very well what you're suggesting, every landlord knows they can build into their leases that the tenants will reimburse them for any response cost. Landlords know how to build in uncertain possible fines, penalties, and the rest in their budget. So the question for the town is, really should the neighbors, who've been awakened at three in the morning two times, and now the third time, should they help bear the cost, the response cost here, because on their property taxes, they're, they're bearing some of that. Or should finally we say no to the owner, even if you've tried you know, three times, you've got to do it and build it into your cost, and you bear the expense. Don't make the neighbors bear the expense nor the rest of the town. I think that's really the issue. So you're saying it, uh, this wording that you've only seen now for the first time? Mm -hmm. we've, actually, we've actually, oh, yeah, okay. we've, we've, had, we've, had, okay. we've had a great deal of discussion about this. Uh, we, it, it's one of those cases where we can see the virtue of both sides, and we feel that we want to stay with a stronger language. Okay. Now, if this uh, were to be made from the floor, I think the town meeting would itself have an opportunity to discuss it. Uh, I think we helped with the crafting of this language, but we, after some discussion, felt uh, that it was too big a loophole, that we really wanted to have a more serious emendation to the bylaw, that we really wanted to get people's attention. Yeah, in four years we have not had anybody assessed um, in any way. Um, Ms. Burr. Two things. One is we should have a separate conversation after town meeting about how when things like the 2008 town meeting article passed and it said that a schedule was going to be developed and it wasn't. And, you know, who tracks that sort of thing besides the neighbors to say, oh, you know, I really wanted that piece in there and has anybody done it yet? Because it didn't happen. And so um, we should have some method of follow-up on that that I'm just not sure what that would look like. But that's a future thing. Um, in terms of the current thing, I, I'm wondering, and maybe it would be helpful to hear from the police chief, I'm not sure. Um, I'm almost wondering about, although I appreciate the discretion, I also worry about the pressure that that puts on the police mm -hmm. to say, oh, come on. We've tried. You know how obnoxious these guys are. We've done our best. And it, I, I'm not sure it doesn't just take us right back to May again, from Shaw back to May. So maybe if I could. Just make the point that there's a lot of discretion exercised today oh, sure. in police enforcement, including in lots of uh, when nu nuisance house violation fines are issued currently. Um, and the police chief and his uh, men and women have used their discretion out in the field that they're trained to be able to use on a daily basis. Um, if there's kind of a recurring problem area, where there's been frequent prior warnings, uh, then there's less discretion, quite frankly, used uh, before the issuance of a ticket. Um, so I think that's true today. This is an extension of that principle. And I'm not going to apologize for the last 25 years of history. Uh, but it is a new day. We are putting new tools into the, into the mix here uh, and new people. Uh, and we're at the beginning stages of seeing some you know, positive progress, although there's still quite a ways to go. But uh, so I'm offering all this with the intention of getting to the promised land, which is, you know, we don't spend all entire town meetings talking about these issues because there's been material progress made on the ground out in the neighborhoods. 
Ms. Stein. I think I um, agree with what Alyssa said, which leads me to support the motion as it is, and perhaps with the second fine, send out a warning that next time, in addition to the fine, administrative costs and response costs will be assessed um, on top of the $300 fine. So um, that obviously we can't add to this, but that's why I think I would stick with the original. Um, I think we have had the maze, and I would like to see it be really strong. Other questions or comments, Mr. Just two. Um, one, um, do I understand correctly, and I think that's not what was said, but I want to that that the uh, the yellowed section in that was inadvertently our penultimate this is our penultimate yes, version. I know this is not the, the final yellow section one. was language that somehow got dropped from the typescript got recouped is back in so it, that, we're that, stipulating that, it's there that is it okay I just I, just want to be clear on that because I, I, I understand and agree the value and I, I will say that when I rise the neighborhood before I make the okay motion. because it's not it's not in the on the black and white version. Okay. All right. So it's seven o'clock, folks. What are we doing? Um, second, I, I just I wanted to to um, support this amendment, this article with the amendment, and not otherwise, because we've seen how well three strikes are out work in in more stringent cases, and this allows sort of us to relocalize the the adjudication, at least the first step of the adjudication of this this process. Uh, Mr. Wall, anything? Oh. So we can't really take a vote that says we're only going to do it if somebody makes that motion. So it seems to me that we can vote on this article and then we can also have a separate position on that amendment if it were to so arise, but we have no idea at this point if that's going to happen. Okay, so, so it's now 7.02. <laughs> we're not going to get to Article 19 tonight <laughs> as much as I might wish that we yes. would. Um, <laughs> suppose we... Uh, meet Wednesday, which I had hoped we didn't need to do, but we finish this on Wednesday. Because I think it is more complicated than just, we can vote a position, but now we're going to be, we're just going to be hasty be about it instead worse. of Ms. Stein. Why not just vote to support this article, and if an amendment comes to the floor, then we can just have a position of how many choose to support the amendment. So that would be an option. The other thing is we have a whole bunch of other things we haven't done tonight that we can't do now because it's after 7 o'clock, so we have to meet Wednesday anyway. So I think since oh, we yes, already have to meet Wednesday because we haven't done the, none of those things okay. are specific between now and There's Wednesday. There's one event on Wednesday, special license. Okay. All right. So we're going to meet Wednesday because we've got to do a couple of things. We're going to postpone this until then, okay. um, and we are going to do the one license right now. Okay. So thank you for coming. We're going to take this up on. I, I, it's entirely up to you. <laughs> I move that the select board approve an all, a special all alcohol license for TOC Incorporated for reception to be held on Wednesday, November 28th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. in the UMass <coughs> School of Management, Adrian, and Judy Bardwell, clerk. Second. Um, Aye. Can we quick move the other one to just get it up? It's over. And then they'll know. I move that got the involved. select board approve the special wine and malt license for TOC. Excuse me, folks. We can hear ourselves. We're doing work here, please. Sergeant for a reception to be held on Thursday, November 29th, 2012, from 4 to 6 p.m. in the Guinness Student Center, UMass Amherst, Judy Bardwell, clerk. Second. For the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 That's Do you need the taxi license or shall we just No, we're just, we got to stop. Okay, so then without objection, the meeting doing? adjourns at 704. Thank you very much. See you here on Wednesday, regrettably. Be there or be here or be square. Thank you.